Hi there, and welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 314. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia, a very frigid Alpharetta, Georgia. <laughs> uh, it was 12 degrees at the bus stop this morning. Holy buckets. Um, this Ohio girl, her blood has thinned out. Um, but yeah, we're freezing here, and I know those of you who are in much colder climates are probably laughing at us Southerners. <laughs> As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. And if you're watching us on replay, thank you. Hello to you as well. So tonight I've got a really fun shadow box project for you. I can't resist shadow boxes. I'm calling it a Nugget Duo Shadow Box. Focus, there we go. <laughs> I wanna give a shout out to my customer, Al, who asked about a shadow box for two Hershey's Nuggets. And I thought, hmm, I'm gonna make one of those. So I do have a, a, a Nugget Trio shadow box from back in 2017. I've got an alternative, alternative to show you as well with just some different products. Uh, but this is using the up, the up in the Air Suite. Oh, I can never remember the name of it. Anyways, I'm, if I haven't already said it, I think I did, but say hello and where you're watching from. I'd love to know what temperature it is where you are. When I said 12 degrees, that's Fahrenheit for those of you in, um, I think, Canada or Europe. They both do Celsius, don't they? <laughs> I don't know. Sure. Everywhere but the U.S. does Celsius. Anyways, um, I also want to welcome Amy Solomon as a new Pixie patron. I saw you join during uh, just before the live stream. I want to give a shout out to my Pixie patrons. You'll recognize them by the little magic wand next to their name. They are supporters of the channel here. You can join at any time, but it's a great time to join because tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern time is our January Pixie Patron members only stream. So um, I'd love to have you join us if you aren't already a YouTube member. You'll find the join button <clears throat> right next to the subscribe button here on the channel. And it depends on which device you're using. If you're using an iOS device and the YouTube app, you might not see a join button, but I've got a magic link for you, the paperpixie.com slash patron. That will take you to the YouTube membership page. And let's see. If you've got questions for me tonight, be sure to put a cue in front of that question, otherwise it's just a comment, and do save the cue for questions. That way I can get to everyone's questions tonight. I will save the Q&A for the end of tonight's live stream, uh, but I'll stay on until I answer all of your questions. That allows me to focus on, excuse me, demonstrating tonight's project for you and then dedicate some time to the Q&A. Let's see, when you shop with me, you earn Pixie Perks on orders of $25 or more. All you need to do to shop with me is to use my magic shopping link, the paperpixie.com slash shop. I recommend bookmarking that link so you always have it handy. That will make sure you're shopping with me. We'll also, it will also auto-magically add my current host code to your order. If your order is gonna be $150 or, $150 or more, before shipping and taxes, you're going to want to take the host code off that order because you're going to get Stampin' Rewards from Stampin' Up. You'll still also earn Pixie Perks from me as well. And we are in the midst of my favorite time of the Stampin' Up year. It is celebration time now through February 29th, which means you can earn free products uh, for qualifying purchases, for big purchases. Also, if you join the Stampin' Up! family between now and February 29th, we've got an incredible, and you've probably seen it, but the Stampin' Glass Mat Studio, which is a $60 value, you'll get that for free with the starter kit. So you can pick up to $125 in product of your choice, plus you get the Stampin' Glass Mat Studio, and all you'll pay is $99 plus tax, free shipping, which is an extra added savings as well on the starter kit. So I'd love to have you join my team of Paper Pixies, whether you are a hobbyist or enthusiast to a business builder or anywhere in between. Let's see, what else do I want to tell you? Um, oh, I do have a link in the description. If you don't already have a Girl Scout in your life, Lily is selling Girl Scout cookies. There's a link in the description. You can have them shipped to you. You can donate to Smiles for Military. That is free shipping with that. Um, and if you're local, we can do local delivery as well. I do have the project sheet linked in the description as well. And this is the project we're gonna be doing tonight. I love a good shadow box. <clears throat> 
And I am determined to make everybody a convert to shadow boxes. They look so much harder than they actually are. And I've done the work of doing all the measurements for you. And this cute little shadow box, I've got a little finger notch here. Um, inside holds two Hershey's Nuggets. And I've got those wrapped with, the desi with designer series paper. Let me go ahead and show you the products we're using tonight. <clears throat> Kind of a, a mixture of things. The designer series paper is lighter than air. This is the six by six designer series paper in the mini catalog. I absolutely love the colors in this. Easy to use for baby cards for Valentine's Day, uh, birthday. I don't know. I just love these pastels and the colors they put together. This is one of my favorite patterns, but we've got lots of beautiful colors in there. We're also going to be using the Coordinating Baker's Twine three color pack, or we're just using the Calypso Coral version. I think that's Calypso Coral. Um, we've got the rainbow dots. And then I, the Sentiment Love You actually comes from the Be My Valentine stamp set. So after tonight's live stream, I'll make sure to include all the projects, all the products that I used for both the project I'm demonstrating tonight as well as the additional sample for you so you can shop those links. And then I'm also using the Everyday Details dies. You're gonna see me bringing these out a lot. The smallest circle I'm using for the sentiment. And then from the Hot Air Balloon bundle, I'm actually just using the dies, but this little heart die, which not only cuts out a heart, which I've done with the polka dot paper, but it'll also cut out, I'll show you in the paper here, these hot air balloons that look like hearts, the die will cut those out as well. So that's kind of a fun, I love when the dies cut out our designer series paper because it takes out a little bit of the work. All right, let's put these away and we'll jump into tonight's project again. This is the project sheet. You'll find that linked in the description. So you've got a template for reference. There's a sneak peek. My printer loves to print this little strip down the center, um, but that is the alternative that I'll show you when we're done. There's a QR code that will go directly back to this video. You've got the measurements and just some featured supplies. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. And I'm gonna be using the beautiful, uh-oh, what's it called, bubble bath. <laughs> Yes, bubble bath. I love this paper because it's pink, but it has a little bit of a hint of purple in it as well. I think it looks, it's kind of lined up in my color rainbow next to Fresh Freesia, but I love this color. And this piece, let me make sure I can see my measurements here, measures six and seven eighths by seven and a half. All right, so I'm gonna go grab my Simply Scored. For shadow boxes, I definitely recommend using a scoreboard. Um, it just makes it go a lot faster and your um, score lines are gonna be a little bit more accurate, excuse me, on a scoreboard. So we've got four measurements to remember here. We're gonna do all of them on all four sides. It's gonna look like a lot of scoring, but that is the magic of a shadow box. So half of an inch, one and one eighth, one and five eighths and two and a quarter. Okay, so we're gonna just keep repeating that. I'm gonna turn it a quarter of a turn each time and I'll repeat the measurements. So half of an inch, one and one eighth, one and five eighths and two and a quarter. Just keep turning a quarter turn, half of an inch, one and one eighth, one and five eighths, and a little cone of hair there, <laughs> two and a quarter. And then finally the last side, half of an inch, one and an eighth, one and five eighths, and two and a quarter. Oh my gosh, Linda, Mr. Bubble. This is exactly Mr. Bubble color. <laughs> oh, it takes me back. <clears throat> All right, now we have two more measurements that we need to add to this. I'm, I've turned it to the long side, which is the seven and a half inch side, and I'm gonna score, but only down to the second horizontal score line. So that's gonna be at two and three quarters. Just come down and stop when you hit that second horizontal score line, and four and three quarters. 
Okay, then I'm going to rotate it 180 and repeat the same thing, two and three quarters, stopping at the second horizontal score line, and four and three quarters, stopping at that second score line. So if I catch the light there, you can see where those stop. Those are important so that we can actually do our little frame cuts there to make this look like a shadow box frame, okay? All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is get to work folding and burnishing. You're gonna do that on all the score lines that go all the way across the cardstock. You can absolutely do these with des designer series paper. I personally prefer to use cardstock because it's just a little bit sturdier. But both will work. <clears throat> We got all of the product shares out. Um, a chunk of them went out Saturday and the rest went out yesterday. So some of you are already receiving them. Always love hearing what your favorites are. All right, so now that we've done that, we can see our score lines a lot better as well. Let me bring in the larger template here for reference, all right? So what I like to do is look for the sides that have the short score lines on them. So these are where the short score lines are here, okay? We will do the little diagonal cuts last, but I'm gonna come in with those short score lines sort of facing me. I'm going to, coming in from the right, one, two, three score lines in, and then I'm gonna cut up four score lines. So in three, up four, and then I'm gonna come in four and go up four. We're gonna kind of create these long strips here. Or this one long strip, okay? Then I'm gonna turn it a quarter of a turn this way and I'm gonna come in four and cut up three. So we're removing these 12 squares and rectangles from the corner. Okay, so that goes away. And then we wanna cut this, but leave a tab behind. So I'm just gonna come in three score lines here and just remove those three pieces or three sections, and I've got a little tab left behind. Okay, so I'm coming back to this side again with the short score lines here. Same thing, I'm gonna come, um, come in three, that was an in and up in the same word, in three, up four, and then in four, up four. These tabs are not um, a requirement. They just do make the corners of the box um, look much nicer if you've got the little tabs to hold the corners together. But if you're gonna make a whole bunch of these, you could probably leave the tabs out, okay? So I did that, came in three, up four, came in four, up four. We've got this little strip. I'm gonna turn it a quarter of a turn. Again, coming in four score lines and removing that whole corner section there but leaving that strip behind, and then I'm gonna leave a little tab behind, like that. Okay, so basically we're removing this and this. Those come away and leave a tab behind. So I'm gonna turn it to the opposite side where we've got those short score lines and repeat the same things, okay? So come in three and up four. I feel like I'm doing like cheerleading or something, in three, or aerobics. <laughs> and in four and up four. Okay. And then I'm gonna turn it a quarter of a turn and remove the 12 sections in the corner. And then leave a tab behind here, like so. So again, grab that out of the trash. <laughs> we just did that and cut those away, leaving a tab behind. So on the final side, we're gonna do the same thing. That time I came in four and up four, and then in three and up three. <laughs> Quarter turn. Remove that, leave that behind to show you again. All right, so again, we removed 
these two sections and then left a tab behind. Okay, so now with those tabs, we're gonna come in and miter cut them. So I like to fold that big section out of the way to kind of isolate those tabs. And then I can come in and miter cut. And then flipping it around. All right. Now it's time to put our little diagonal cuts, which are here. Okay, so depending on whether you're left-handed or right-handed, you'll, you'll hold the cardstock in a different orientation. So I always like to cut essentially what we're doing here if I put this next to our template. I've got the little tab here and I'm coming up to the, well, the bottom of the score line and then the, the horizontal score line just beneath it. And we're gonna cut from the score line where it meets the edge of the cardstock on an angle to the bottom of the short score line. Okay. And what I like to do is fold all of that out of the way. That tab is not going to get cut off. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and again, where the bottom of that short score line ends, come down one more horizontal score line and you're going to cut from the edge diagonally up to, well, it would help if we cut the, <laughs> Let's cut these first and that'll make a lot more sense. So I'm gonna cut right down those short score lines. Let's just do that first. This is how my brain works as far as creating shadow boxes. You may do things in a different order and it all gets to the same place. All right, now that we've got those cut, let me repeat that again. I'm gonna fold this section out of the way and I'm gonna cut from this score line diagonally up to the bottom of that short cut that we just made. I like to do that kind of in one fell swoop with my scissors. So we just cut off that piece here, okay? And so because I'm right-handed, I'm gonna flip this over to do the opposite side, fold that section out of the way, and again, coming from that score line, now that tab is hiding it a little bit, so I'll move that out of the way so you can see it. Then cutting from the score, score line beneath up on an angle to give us that frame look, okay? I'll show you that on the template there, like so. Same thing, I'm going to the opposite side, fold that section out of the way, cut on an angle, like so. Turning it over. Just fold that tab out of the way. And same thing, just cut on an angle. Like so. Okay, so now that looks like our template. All right, and again, you'll be able to see that on the project sheet. Now is the fun part to add our tear and tape. This is my preference for shadow boxes. Tear and tape gives me a little bit more control of where to put adhesive. Um, liquid adhesive will work for this, but you'll just have to be very mindful of not getting it all over your all over your fingers. Um, and I prefer tear and tape over tape runner because I sometimes can't totally control where the tape runner goes. So I'm gonna go ahead with tear and tape. I always love to use my metal ruler for this. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply tear and tape in the last section, but instead of going to the edge of the cardstock, I'm actually gonna go to the edge of the score line. So let me do one section here and I'll bring it up closer to the camera. I like to put, you can use a credit card, a gift card, um, anything to kind of make that tearing easier. You can tear it with your hands as well. But do you see how I'm just right up to the score line as opposed to the edge of the paper? So I'm gonna do that in the outside section of all four sides.
All right, so we've done all four sides there. Again, tear and tape right up to the score line. Okay, then we're gonna put a little piece of tear and tape, same thing, right up to the score line on these little tabs. I'll show you that closer to the camera. And then I like to turn it this way so that my tear and tape is always going away from the cardstock because otherwise I'll stick to everything. And you can put down your silicone craft sheet if it helps as well. All right, so I also put it on the four tabs, again, right up to the score line, okay? And then flipping it over, we've just got four more pieces to add here. And I'm just gonna put a little piece right along that diagonal cuts that we made, okay? And that's gonna help the frame um, hold itself down to the shadow box base. All right, so I'm just tearing these because it's just easier and faster. The fun part will be watching Julie wrestle with static. In this cold weather, the tear and tape backing has a mind of its own with static electricity. <laughs> All right, so technically we are doing 12 pieces of tear and tape. So we've got it, I know it's a little hard to see on the bubble bath, but we've got it on those four edges, again, sticking to the score lines, the four tabs, and then right up to the edge of those four diagonals, okay? So I'm gonna start, now this is where if you wanted to bring in the silicone craft mat, it's helpful, but not necessary. I'm just gonna go ahead and put that down while I work on removing tear and tape backing. You're gonna laugh at me Well, this backing is gonna have a mind of its own. I feel like I should just put it straight into the trash. Oh, <laughs> so how many packages do we do for 162, I think it was what the number was. The um, adhesive backing from the Priority Mail padded flat rate mailers, oh my word. Nolan's job was actually to pull that out of my hand each time <laughs> I took it off, because I was, I, you were in a different room, but I was shaking my hand to try to get those things off my hand, but the static had a mind of its own. I felt like I needed a wet sponge or something to try to combat the static electricity, but that would have just made more of a mess. All right, so I pulled all the backings off of this side, and we're gonna do the same on the other side. The uh, silicone craft mat helps just in case you press down um, where there's, <laughs> I'm shaking it in the trash. Um, I'm trying to put it right into the trash um, as I pull it off <laughs> so that you don't have to see me struggle. Um, but in case you press the cardstock down with the adhesive, it'll, it won't stick to the silicone mat. All right, so this is the fun part. I love putting these together. Um, so we're going to focus on the sides that have the tabs and then the flat edge. So don't touch the diagonal, the ones that we put the little diag diagonal cuts in. We're gonna do those last. So what I'm gonna actually do for these um, to get this started is I'm gonna fold on the first and third score lines. So first and third. Wait, what, I, all right, I was doing first and fourth. First and third, okay? So one, as it stuck to my finger, and three. And then I'm gonna press flat. And what that does is using our score lines, that starts to create one of the sides of our shadow box, okay? Using our score lines to get that all squared up for us. So first and third. Once you make a bunch of these, you'll know exactly which ones, but you can count them as you're getting started, okay? So we've done that. Those are those two sides. The next thing we're gonna do is stick the tabs to the ones that have the diagonal cuts. So basically to do that, we're gonna line up this score line on the tab with the cut edge on the opposite side. So you just wanna take your time doing that. Again, with tear and tape, you don't have a lot of wiggle room, but I'm just lining up and squaring up that corner. Give it just a light press there. And then we're just gonna work our way around to all four tabs and do the same thing. So again, I like to kind of tuck both of those tabs in as I work on the last side. There we go. And then the last one, 
like so. And that tear and tape does just, it holds just enough. And you'll see that you have that nice edge there. Now, if you didn't have the tabs, you'd have just a little bit of a gap in the sides, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this edge here and I'm kind of using my hand, I'm kind of curving the edge to hit the back wall. Again, you're gonna kind of stick to your tear and tape here. This is always hard to show on video. But again, this edge, I'm kind of curving to hit this back wall, okay? Before I'm going to place it into place. So I'm getting that to the back wall, like so. And you can kind of feel when it gets there, it won't go any further. And then I'm just gonna kind of roll this down into place. And as I do that, I like to just kind of push in on the sides and press. And if you remember, we put the tear and tape right underneath that diagonal cut. So like magic, our shadow box is just about done. So I'm gonna turn it this way and we're gonna do the same thing. That edge, I'm gonna kind of curl in. Now, one thing I wanna point out, remember we put that tear and tape right here along the edge. So you don't want to fold this completely flat. I'm pushing the limits here. <laughs> um, I don't want this cardstock to stick to the tear and tape we put on that edge. So just kind of, just kind of curling it in till you feel it kind of hitting that back edge. And then I'll kind of roll it down into place and just press right on that diagonal edge, like so. And then you've got I love how sturdy the shadow boxes are, okay? Super cute shadow box. And it's perfectly sized to fit two Hershey's Nuggets. So that's the next step. We're gonna, give, we're gonna dress up our Hershey's Nuggets. And I love this because it only uses a minimal amount of designer series paper, just a one by three inch strip. This, always, this reminds me of like a clown costume, the little diamond pattern, super cute. Um, and so for these, I just put a little strip of tear and tape so I want the diamond pattern to be on the outside, so I'll flip it over, find the end of my tear and tape, and then I'm just gonna run it right along one of the short edges, right up to the edge. Um, dressing up nuggets is a great project for sitting on the couch with a good TV show, maybe a glass of wine. <laughs> They're fun to do a bunch of them in bulk. I know many of you have places you go like Costco to get big bags of Hershey's nuggets. This would be a fun project to um, do multiples of. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the backing off of the tear and tape. And then we're gonna just go ahead and wrap the nugget. So I'm taking the edge, the short edge that doesn't have the tear and tape, and I'm gonna start that on the bottom of the Hershey's nugget. And then I'm just gonna tightly wrap around. And as I come around, I wanna make sure that my edges are lined up. You can kind of slide things into place if you need to before I press that tear and tape side down. And then you've got a cute little dressed up Hershey's nugget, okay? I love that because it covers up the, um, the Hershey's name on there. Makes them a little dressier. So we'll repeat the same thing again, the short end that doesn't have the tear and tape Tightly wrap it around. You do have to do this a little bit fast, although current temperatures in Atlanta, these aren't gonna melt in my hands. <laughs> but you wanna do that a little bit quickly so it doesn't start to melt on you. And it's not stuck to the wrapper, so if you made an oops, you can slide it off, put a different piece if you maybe put tear and tape on the wrong side. But those two are gonna fit right in there. So cute. Okay, and my 2017 project, I had done a window box or window sheet, not window box, shadow box, window sheet um, cover to, it was a trio. So three of them side by side. It was a little cute little um, like love gift. So I'm doing a similar thing, but with designer series paper. So for that, I've got a piece of the light as air. I, one of these days will remember, lighter than air. This measures just a hair shorter than two inches. So I didn't go to one and 15 sixteenths. I went kind of right in between. So I always say a hair less than two inches by two and five eighths. Let me double check that measurement. Let's 
Let's see. Yep. So just under two inches by two and five eighths. Okay. So on the two and five eighths inch side, you can use your paper trimmer or the Simply Scored or any scoring tool that you have. We're gonna just score at five eighths from each side. So on the two and five eighths inch side, score at five eighths from both sides. Okay, now for this one, I like to just fold in the score lines without, without burnishing. It just gives it a little bit of extra kind of push on the sides. If you forget and out of habit you burnish, it's totally fine. But I'm just gonna fold on the score lines with my hands. And then see how it kind of sticks out like so because we didn't burnish. That'll just kind of keep it in place a little bit better. And then I opted to put a little finger notch. This is just a little half inch circle punch along the side here so that the recipient can get that out. So this is literally just sitting right in the shadow box as a cover for those Hershey's nuggets. So super cute. You could do a belly band. You could do um, a, just a strip of a belly band. You could do a full size belly band so the whole shadow box fits into it. I love doing this little cover as well. So it's an option. It doesn't use a lot of paper as well. Now, to decorate this, we're going to do a couple of things. I've die cut things ahead of time uh, to save time, but this is from the hot air balloon dies, and I cut that out of the polka dot pattern from Lighter Than Air. And then this is from the Everyday Details dies. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Everyday Details, ties, details dies, the smallest circle. I'm going to stamp the sentiment Love You, which again comes from the be my valentine stamp set but there's some other cute sentiments in there as well this is azure afternoon and i love the photopolymer because i can see exactly where i'm stamping so there we go pretty blue in this paper and then we're going to go ahead and kind of create our little vignette here so I'm gonna grab a couple of dimensionals. There's a different one if you're looking for the shadow box. It should be um, a trio shadow box, trio shadow box or something. All right, so I wanna make sure that I'm putting dimensionals. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it here. I don't want the dimensionals to stick to the shadow box part, because I want the recipient to be able to lift this out. So I just put two there that I'll put the heart on. Like so you kind of control the placement by putting those down first. And then grabbing the Baker's Twine three color pack, the Calypso Coral version, we're gonna do a little kind of like zigzag or Fobo. Yes, that's the one. Hershey's Nugget Trio Shadow Box. Uh, let's see, I'm going to grab a glue dot. Ooh, Bubba G's here. <laughs> hey, Gregors. Ooh, Gregors, I got to show you what Gloria made. She made an awesome Ohio State card. All right, so I'm just popping a glue dot. It's right there on the heart. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of do a little zigzag. Actually, I'm going to do it in my fingers first. <laughs> Some loop-de-loops. And I'm eyeballing it that it's going to stick out. Uh, let's see. Let's make that loop a little bit bigger. I want to be able to see the loops and the tails on either side of that circle. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it here. And then trim off the other end. And I've just kind of got this pinched in the center here. But when I stick down the glue dot, you'll see kind of the configuration of this. It's literally just a simple zigzag. So no knot, but I'm kind of sticking it right into that glue dot. Okay. And then again, we're going to put our dimensionals down first. So I'm going to do one there. And because this is already on dimensionals, I don't want to add another dimensional up here because then that'll be a little cattywampus with the topography of it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the backing off of this one. I'm going to lay this down where I want it. 
And then I'm gonna come in with a couple of glue dots just to stick everything else into place. So, glue dots can be your foe or your friend, depending on how you're putting it down. So I'm just gonna kind of lift this up. And if it's easier, you could pull the whole paper thing out of here to work on this. But I'm gonna go ahead and hide a glue dot on top of that twine. But I know you can't really see that. I, I need to also use the leverage of pressing that down to get my take your pick tool out because that twine and glue dots um, don't get along so well if you're trying to pull or if you're trying to leave the glue dot behind on the twine. And then I'm just going to stick another glue dot just right underneath the sentiment there so that all lays flat. Okay. And the final piece de resistance is one of the rainbow dots. Let's do, I'll do another fresh freesia, my favorite color. And we'll just pop that. I'm gonna put it right there. Like so. Let me tidy up a bit. All right, so there is our Nugget Duo Shadow Box. And again, just a little finger notch there. There's the Hershey's Nuggets. This will just lay right in over the top. And let me show you a quick alternative here. So Jan, if you're watching, I know you're gonna watch me on replay tomorrow. She always does some amazing projects for um, people in her community and for her daughter's coworkers. And she was interested in the Be Mind Suite. So this just has a ribbon belly band to it. I opted to not add the sentiment to the front, but it's got a little sentiment on the inside. Isn't that cute? You can hide a little message inside the shadow boxes. And I believe the inside measurements for that, if anybody's taking notes, it is one and one eighth by one and three quarters. Okay. And then I just used um, You Make My Heart Buzz and the heart stamps from Be My Valentine for that. So another fun way, um, if you want something a little bit more traditional for Valentine's Day, you can hide the little sentiment under there. And that bumblebee is just too fun to make. So I uh, will show you quickly. I did dimensionals, but just on the top part of the bee so that I could slide the ribbon on and off. So I think sometimes as crafters, we think you know, sentiments have to be on the front of the project or somewhere where it's visible, but I also love kind of hiding them as well. So we got our belly band on there and it'll tuck just right underneath our bumblebee there because of where I put the, um, that needs to get tightened a little bit, um, where I put the, the uh, dimensionals under the bumblebee. So there you go, two different alternatives. Measurements are the same. There's just that added little um, basic white square for the hidden sentiment on the inside, but you can figure that one out for sure. Um, the interior dimensions of the box, I don't think I mentioned it, but it is listed on the project sheet, is, before I say the wrong thing, it is one and three eighths in height by two inches in width by five eighths inches in depth. And that's pretty much the measurement of two Hershey's nuggets. Okay. So you could put other things in here. You could put a couple coins, maybe some chocolate coins if you don't want to do Hershey's nuggets. So there's other things that you can, you can fit in there as well, but a cute little table favor, great little thank you gift for people as you go about your business for the day. And I love doing shadow boxes because people are just like, wow, because it just looks like a cute little shadow box. So there we go, that's tonight's projects. Um, quick housekeeping items before we jump into tonight's Q&A. If you haven't already taken a moment to hit the like button here on YouTube, we'd appreciate that. And the link to the project sheet again is in the description. I will also add chapters to this video after the live stream. So when you do come back to it, you can jump around to different parts of the live stream as you'd like. And I think that's it for now. Let me go ahead and get questions teed up. A quick reminder, if you do have a question, put a cue in front of that question and please save that for questions for me. Um, I am on a little bit, well, I'm a about 20 to 30 seconds ahead of you. So if for some reason I don't get your to your question if it shows up at the end, um, I do read all of your comments after the live stream, but um, I try to catch all the comments, but sometimes that lag gets me hung up. You took care of that one. Okay, great. Let me go to the next scene here. 
All right, Patty is up. Has it snowed there? Um, it has not. There, the snow flurries were threatened, weren't they? I think there were a couple of school systems. Well, um, Northern Georgia. Northern Georgia, for sure. But a couple of school systems uh, went. Tuesday was a professional development day, and a lot of the teachers switched from going to their professional development training and said and staying home. But it was cold this morning. No snow yet. I mean, if it's going to be this cold, I like there to be snow, but the problem in Atlanta is that we'll shut everything down if it snows. What happens is the sun will come out during the day, and then as soon as it gets cooler at night, we have ice everywhere, and it doesn't matter where you live, nobody can drive on ice, and we just don't have enough ice trucks, or ice trucks, salt trucks to take care of that. It's a little different than Ohio, <laughs> where I was born and raised, but yeah, no snow yet. The triple nugget box, Brian, did you drop that in the chat? Yeah. Okay, so Terry, um, if you didn't grab that link in the chat from Brian, you can go to my blog. There's a little magnifying glass, thepaperpixie.com, and just search for uh, triple nugget, I think is the phrase, or you can just type in nugget. It'll show you all my Hershey's nugget projects, and you should see that one there if you didn't grab it in the chat. Ooh, do the mini ice chaps fit in there? Let me check that, Cindy. I, I don't know. trying to guess before actually trying it. Uh, let's see. Ooh, Cindy. One, two. Okay, you can fit two of them, but they're a little loose. You can't fit three. And you'll adjust barely. There's just a little bit of height, but that shouldn't be a problem. So yeah, you can fit two chap ices in there. Um, good question. All right. You can absolutely make a slide top for this, Deborah. What I would actually recommend for, um, like a, a belly band or slide top is actually to, um, physically fold it around the edges as opposed to doing measurements. Cause I will tell you the measurements I've done them before where I've given measurements and the measurements get really complicated because of the way the shadow box goes together, um, there's just a little little bit more extra width than height than depth uh, by like a hair that shadow boxes kind of add to that the out the exterior dimensions. And so if I were to give you measurements for like a belly band or a slider, they'd be really complicated. So my recommendation would be to cut a piece of cardstock to the width of the box and then just manually fold it around the box to get the right size for it. That would be my recommendation for that. But yeah, absolutely, you could do that. Ooh, that's a good question, Joy. Um, I'm not gonna say yes to that, but it's not a no never. Um, I am kind of slowly going back to older projects and giving them new life with new new products. And if I do that, then absolutely there'll be an updated project sheet. Um, but we just have to decide as a business if that level of effort is worth the level of effort because that would just take us away from bringing you new stuff. So I'll keep it in mind, but it'll I'll typically I will will redo project sheets as I sort of bring those projects back into the fold, if that makes sense. So a little bit of a hybrid there. Let's see. Ooh, too many Tic Tac boxes. That's a good question, Sue. I think the mini, I don't have any of those on hand because um, I think I ended up giving them all away for swaps when I had gotten them the last time. So I, I should have saved an extra one, but I think the mini Tic Tac boxes are actually wider than, um, or I should say deeper than five eighths of an inch. So I don't know if they will work, but I do have a couple of mini Tic Tac box projects on my blog. So you might be able to kind of decipher the measurements um, from there. Um, or if anybody else has tried it, feel free to let us know. I just can't remember the finished dimensions of the little mini Tic Tac boxes. Those are hard to find sometimes. Let's see, would a nugget and an ice chap fit the box then? I think those two together would. Well, I know that they would because the chap ice is smaller. Now I've gotten this feedback before about um, fragrance. I know I gotta fix my camera to focus. 
um, fragrance kind of leaching into the chocolate. That is totally up to your discretion. Um, I've had some feedback that, um, you know, it's not recommended to put uh, what a uh, food with a non-food item, I think, because your chocolate might end up tasting like the chap ice and we wouldn't want that. <laughs> I'm learning as we go. All right. All right, I think that you guys were easy on me tonight. Not a ton of questions. Awesome. Um, let's see. Do that. Well, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope you enjoyed tonight's project and maybe learned a new tip or trick or two. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email at support at the And I look forward to seeing you guys again next week. We'll be back for episode 315 next Wednesday. That is the... 24th. <laughs> I think that's right. Uh, January 24th. And my Pixie patrons, we will have tomorrow night's Pixie patron members only live stream. That's at 8 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow night, episode four for us. If you're not already a Pixie patron member, we, member, we'd love to have you join us. You can join the channel by clicking the join button, which will be below this video near the subscribe button. If you don't see that button, it might be device dependent. You can always go to the paperpixie.com slash patron, and that will take you where you need to go. We've got celebration going on now through February 29th. So grab those free products while you can. We've got some amazing free products to choose from. Lots of papers, stamp sets. There's an embossing folder, embellishments, ribbon. It's my favorite time of year to earn free stuff just for shopping. So again, any questions, let me know. Support at thepaperpixie.com. And don't forget all you need are stamps, ink, and a little paper pixie. Here's a shout out to my amazing pixie patrons. Thank you so much for your support. We will see you next Wednesday. Take good care. Bye.